Let's turn to Republican Congressman Michael McCall of Texas, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, so you heard Secretary Mayorkas there. The, the, the surge at the border following the end of Title 42 is not as big, at least so far, as was anticipated, uh, including you. Uh, I mean, many people thought it was going to be much bigger. Why is that? Is, is the message gotten through that the border is not open? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I, I. I do think there are caravans going up. I think they still want to get in. My uh, governor, my home state, has put uh, uh, Texas National Guard and DHS uh, CBP troops on the border to stop uh, the influx. Um, but yeah, the fact is, the last two and a half years speak for themselves. We've had five million people enter this country illegally. Uh, 1.5 getaways. Uh, it's unsustainable. And I really enjoyed. Uh, you know, the, the federal judge, they're usually fairly objective, saying that this was the defendant, in this case, the United States of America, right. of, of its own making, this crisis. I, I mean, it, it, the, the, they are doing some things. I mean, Mayorkas tried to distance himself from the Trump policy, but, but they're, you know, they are imposing penalties or say they will impose penalties for those across illegally. You have to come through a, a, a legal process. Uh, do you support that? Why did it take him so long? I mean, I told him from day one, uh, you can call it whatever you want, but the migrant protection protocols remain in Mexico were working. Why? Because political asylum has been abused by the cartels, and when they get into the United States, whether they have legitimate claims or not, they're released into our society, and then you have five million people without any legal status. A lot of them go to stash houses, they're trafficked, uh, they get into criminal enterprises here in the United States. And it's interesting that two and a half years later, they're now walking this back and trying to implement something, you know, MPP-like, uh, but not exactly. We passed a border security bill this week in Congress, and my portion was to codify and authorize into law the migrant protection protocols. So you passed that bill as entirely party lines. Uh, is, is there any, I mean, obviously the solution here, everybody is saying, and has been saying it for years, is you need to have Congress uh, do another immigration reform bill. Is, is there, is there yeah. any, are you, are you having any negotiations on the other side of the aisle on this? Yeah, and I chaired a Homeland Security Committee. We did a lot of border bills, bipartisan. I think there's room for that. I think this was kind of our big, bold blueprint, if you will, that if we got the Senate and the White House, this is what Republicans would pass. Uh, I'm still hopeful that there are rational Democrats out there who will work with us on some of these provisions. I don't think the whole bill is going to pass uh, you know, Schumer. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not uh, disillusioned by that. I mean, I, but I do think there are some things we can do bipartisan. All right. And I also need to ask you about the, the debt ceiling showdown. We heard from uh, President Trump saying, uh, basically endorsing, not basically, but endorsing the idea of default. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how concerned are you that we are headed towards a default? Well, it's, this is always a, a game we play, um, every Congress. You know, and, and daring each other to jump off the cliff. It's a dangerous game. I think uh, defaulting on our full faith and credit, uh, any financial person would tell you that's very uh, catastrophic. So, I, you know, what I think is going to happen, I think Republicans have given, at least, you know, again, like with the border, we have a plan. They said we couldn't govern. We got a border bill passed. But, but, but as you know, we that plan is ceiling bill dead on arrival with, with Democrats. And, I, 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 a... and look, and like you voted for debt ceiling increases under President Trump. Was it three times? And he, historically high deficits under Donald Trump. I mean, this guy's not somebody who cut spending. Well, but, so, so what, why not? But the point is, we've come forward with our plan. Now let's, the president's got to come back with, with what his plan is. I, I think we, we were reasonable to say we're willing to raise the debt ceiling, but we want meaningful spending cuts and capping spending at 2022 levels. I, I want to play something that Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff had to say about how the world is looking at this this yeah. debate. China uh, right now uh, describes us in their open speeches, et cetera, as a declining power. Defaulting on the debt will only reinforce that thought and embolden China mm -hmm. and increase risk mm -hmm. to the United States. Are you worried? I mean, you're chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. Are you, you worried about the national sure, security? Sure. Our adversaries look at this very closely. Uh, they look at when we're divided, too, as a nation. Uh, I, I think they would love nothing more, particularly China, to see us default, you know, our full faith and credit under the Constitution. I, I, uh, I took a note to the Constitution. 
I think defaulting is, is not uh, the right path to go down. So I, I'm the eternal optimist. I mean, it's not the right path, it's disastrous. Well, I, I think it would be. And I think any financial investor will tell you that. I think any economist will tell you that. And I agree with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs that our adversaries are looking at this and we have to be very careful what we do. I, I'm optimistic we will get to a place where we can avoid that situation. Okay, you've been a staunch ally of Ukraine in fending off this, the, the Russian uh, aggression. Uh, I want to play something that Donald Trump had to say at his town hall meeting this morning about it. I mean, this week. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. I mean, what, what do you say to that? I mean, he's, he's your Republican frontrunner right now. Well, and, and I think Donald and, and he, Trump... And he, and he can't say whether or not he wants Ukraine to, to win against Russia, uh, Russian aggression. I think he always thinks in terms of winning and losing. I, I will say this. I think what he is thinking is that this counteroffensive, which is happening soon, will be so successful that we can have a ceasefire and maybe get to a negotiating phase. Um, do I want Ukraine to win? Of course. That's why I wanted the administration to put everything they had into this conflict so they could win. And thank God the Brits stepped it up when this administration went put the longer range artillery to Crimea. Our administration has put Crimea as, as a red line and uh, a victory in Ukraine is also a victory against the Chinese Communist Party in, in Taiwan. I just came back from the region. Every Asian leader told me what happens in Ukraine has a direct impact on Taiwan. Okay, two quick questions before we go. One, uh, Secretary Blinken, you said you would hold him in contempt, a uh, vote to have, hold him in contempt of Congress for not turning over the dissent cable on, on Afghanistan. That has not been turned over. Are you going to hold Blinken in contempt? Well, you know, it's not, it's not uh, my choice. It's his. I mean, we have a legitimate subpoena. There's no executive privilege. A dissenting cable of 23 employees out of the embassy before Afghanistan fell, stating why they dissented to the administration's policy is very relevant to congressional oversight. Um, we're trying to work with them. They just sent a, another letter trying to delay this contempt proceeding. But if we don't get that cable, you know, they offered a filtered summary. So, so not summary. yet, so not yet, you're not. They offered a filtered summary. They've okay. offered another sort of a peace offering, if you will. I think it's a delay tactic, but I am prepared to move forward to contempt proceedings. But I take it very seriously, Jonathan. I mean, I, this would be the first time a Secretary of State's ever been held in contempt by Congress, and it's criminal contempt. So I don't take it lightly. I mean, you can, this I is the, I mean, there, he, he, there could be prison for this. I mean, if he's found. Well, we we'll go to the Justice. Yeah. Part. I mean, okay. All right, Chairman McCall. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jonathan. Come